It's a very disturbing film for anyone to watch, and I can only imagine how much more so for anyone in this audience who calls Sri Lanka home or has family and friends who have lived through that conflict. As mentioned at the beginning of um, today's event, we are going to open up a question and answer period if you have questions for our speakers. Also, if you did come late after I spoke at the beginning, is although some Amnesty members were interviewed for this film, this was not an Amnesty International produced film. It is one that Amnesty has found as a useful tool for sparking discussion um, and raising some general awareness. Amnesty acknowledges that there have been atrocities committed on both sides of the conflict. And for those of you who do have questions for our speakers tonight, I would just encourage you um, to think about your own feelings and your own, perhaps, um, attachments to the country and your own family and friends and be sensitive to people who might uh, be feeling differently. Thank you very much. Do we have a show of hands with anyone who has a question for one of our speakers? And Natalie and Deirdre, if you can maybe circulate toward the back and let me know if there's somebody back there who has a question. Yes, yes. My name is Manraj. I'm a Sri Lankan American. And my wife actually just came from Sri Lanka a couple of weeks ago. And she said that there are 700 checkpoints or whatever yes. the army. Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me finish, man. Then you can answer my question. You said that there are a lot of locations where you have seen in 700 places within Colombo and uh, army points or whatnot. And also, you said 78,000 people are displaced by the army. Uh, that's not true. The reason why I'm saying so is those people have encroached uh, illegally to land where it's government property. Even in this country, if you are encroached like that, you are supposed to get out. <coughs> and we have, they have given them chances to go out to another location where they did not. So there are some ways. And that, that's the reason that the, they were taken forcefully. So that's not, I mean, what you said is mostly untrue. I, I have to disagree with most of the stuff you said, because I, I have visited Sri Lanka twice last year, and I haven't seen that what's going on. I have time with friends, OK? Krishan, so, would you like to respond? Yeah. Can, you, can you tell me about where you're talking about this, uh, the 78,000 people? That's in Colombo. Colombo. Their shanties. Shanties mean they are not legal actual structures. I'm a I'm a qualified inspector in this country, building and building construction. So I know that the laws does not allow them to do illegal structures. That's a risk. Okay, the number is 177 uh, points of entry within an 80 kilometer street, A9 road coming down, not 700. So I hope you listen carefully. Okay. And the second one is 75,000, okay, of uh, families, right? All Sinhalese, right? Who have lived in Colombo for a very long time. I think if you know areas pretty well. And the difference, what you're trying to say, is normally the police will go in, right? To take care of such situations, because these are serious situations, right? Right now, because we have 200,000 military, right? The military is used. It is the explanation is about how the military is used. Okay, I, thank I, you. Let me answer your question again. I mean, because you are not telling the truth. Let me answer you that again. The poli you know, if you go, if you next the question, you can't can stay for one question. One question. Sir, yeah. let me explain. Sir, because I'm a Sri yes, Lankan. could you please repeat your question? Yeah. Thank you. The question is actually. The Sri Lankan police was not used. If you know the territory, because if you don't know the territory, obviously people will think that they are using army to evacuate these people. These are actually shanties where a lot of illegal stuff is happening. They are all thugs. They are all gangs, if you know. And and you can't, you know, you can't allow the police because sometimes they actually overrule the police. That's the reason that they, they go with the army. Um, Krishna, a quick response. Thank you. And I would really like to know one. Uh, you have discredited me on many ones, but I would appreciate you really listening to what I'm saying. Again, 80 kilometers, 177 points as of two weeks ago. Okay? 
from 2009, from, no, no. from 2009, right? Uh, until 2011, I visited Sri Lanka seven times. Okay? I got access from the military to go into places. I work with sometimes the government officials to go into places. Right? They have invited me and I go in. And this particular situation, what we are trying to tell, is about the militarization of a nation. Okay? And I think we need to keep in mind while everyone will have opinions, there's critical information that's coming out of Sri Lanka by the human rights community that is not coming. Thank you. A question for James Donald. I have a question about MST International. Are you portraying that you are impartial in this matter? Amnesty International, I'm asking you. Yes, so Jim is our country specialist for Sri Lanka okay. from Amnesty All right. International, and he'll speak to that. Do you claim that Channel 4 is impartial or free media on this matter? We think, as I said at the beginning, that this film contains important elements to be considered in an impartial international inquiry. So it's impartial, you said. We are, no, you're not, I'm sorry, you're not so, listening to what Sorry, I'm yeah, I, you're not clear to me. Yeah, I, please go. I said, we think that this film contains important evidence to be considered in an impartial inquiry into what happened in Sri Lanka. Okay. If people want to attempt to disprove any particular point of what was shown in the film, we think that should be considered by such an inquiry. Okay, clear. Please, let me ask them now the question. Yes, okay. Amnesty International yeah. is impartial. We're showing this film that Amnesty okay. did not produce, again, just to, to create a springboard for discussion. And okay, thanks. Do you know that Amnesty International accepted 50,000 Canadian dollars recently? Do you know that? No, no, no. He has to. Uh, he is. He is talking on behalf of us as well. <laughs> is that true or not? What? He's getting the document. Yeah. Just be patient, please. Amnesty International recently accepted fifty thousand dollars from terrorist organized affiliated so backing James, terrorist organizations, right? Canada. For forwarding these things. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. The yeah, uh, yeah, film shows some people killed so many. Yeah. so sad. LTD did the same. He's answering your question. Okay. My first grader, right. we hate better. Thanks. So Jim is going to address your question. Could you please have silence and allow Jim to answer? Thank you so much. Sure. Please go ahead. If you would like to know the response to that question, here it is. Amnesty International Canada recently received from the Canadian Tamil Congress a $50,000 donation, uh, 50,000 Canadian dollars. Amnesty International Canada has posted on their website a public statement in regard to this matter, which I have a copy of here. I won't read you the whole thing, it's about four paragraphs. But, um, and I'll summarize it. What, what, has happened, what happened was last September, Canadian Tunnel Congress apparently holds an annual walkathon. And they designated that the proceeds of the walkathon for last year's event would go to Amnesty International Canada. These donations, AI Canada says, in no way impair the independence of Amnesty International, which is nonpartisan and works on human rights issues around the globe. Amnesty receives financial support from a broad range of individuals committed to the protection and promotion of human rights. Excuse me, Lord, Thank you. Well, you know, Tamil is Canadian. I'd like to finish answering the question. To be fair, it is on the AI Canada website. Anybody can, with internet access can look it up. The other two points I just want to make from the statement are that these hundreds of contributions from the various participants in the walkathon were offered with no conditions.